Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Caitlin and I'm so grateful to have you today. Whether you're just randomly stumbling across this video or you have been subscribed for a while, I'm so excited to bring you this video because um, lots of people ask me questions about this so often and so I figured why not just make a YouTube video detailing it, all of it in one place. In today's video, I am going to be showing you my Dubia cockroach breeder colony. Um, I get asked about it a lot because um, I breed my own food for kiwi. I don't have to pay for it. The colony is pretty much self-sufficient and it's super easy to take care of. Um, and so I just thought that I would make a nice video showing you all about how you can get your roaches to breed, what you need, and everything to get you started. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure to comment down below telling me what your favorite part of the video was. Share this with any other Reptile Keeper friends that you might have. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on my notifications to get notified when I post new content trying out a little bit of a new posting schedule. I'm trying to post every Thursday and every Sunday, so um, hopefully that's going to work out for me unless I for some reason get too busy, but I love making these videos for you guys, so I really can't imagine why I would take a week or even longer off. I also wanted to mention that I made a brand new intro and I'm really excited about it. I added the guinea pigs into it because the guinea pigs weren't part of my original intro when I launched the YouTube channel. So um, check that out. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. It's coming up next right after this. You're watching Caitlin's Critters. All right, so here is my colony. As you can see, they're in a tank. They're in a 10 gallon tank that I got from Petco recently. Um, they have dollar per gallon sales all the time and you can get tanks for so cheap there. Um, I know a lot of people like to keep them in little like Rubbermaid totes or large Rubbermaid totes either way, um, but I just like the way that this looked better because I like to come in here and watch them sometimes. I find it kind of cool to see what they're doing. So if you look at this cockroach right here, that is an adult female. She has very short wings. Um, and that is how you can tell that a dubia roach is a female. Here is a male roach. He has a bit longer of wings than the female would. Um, and that is how you can tell that a roach is a male. I'm going to pull one of each sex out and hold them um, in my hands so you guys can get a little bit better of a picture. All right, so here's my female. Um, you can see her shorter wings and she has kind of a shell on her back. That is how you can tell that a roach is female. She is fully grown. Um, roaches go through stages of molting. And um, once your roach gets this big and you can, oop, blooper, and you can see wings on them, uh, that means that they're fully grown. All right, here is a male. As you can see, he's got his long wings. Um, these guys cannot fly, contrary to popular belief but they can glide. And so if they jump from somewhere and they flap their wings, they'll glide in a downward motion, but they can't propel themselves upwards. So don't worry about flying cockroaches escaping into your house. So really all that I have done to help out this colony is given them egg cartons and uh, paper towel rolls and toilet paper rolls to hide in. I have given them a bowl of water crystals and I feed them fresh fruits and vegetables daily. You can see a baby on the zucchini right there. 
Uh, the little babies are called nymphs. I'm not exactly sure why, but they just are. You'll sound silly if you don't call them that, so uh, just call them nymphs. There are a bunch of little babies over here with a big female roach. Um, some people like to separate the nymphs from the adults in the colony. Um, I don't do that. Some people do that because they have problems with their adult males eating the babies because the adult males can do that. But I have not had problems thus far, and so I am just going to keep them together and see how it goes. Some people do also like to provide them with a heat mat because they are tropical animals. And um, so some people provide them with a heat mat to make them a little bit warmer to entice them to breed just a little bit more. But I haven't found the need to do that. My roaches are breeding just fine without one. And just to let you guys know, once roaches start breeding, they breed like rabbits. They breed so much and so often and you're going to find so many little babies in your colony and you're not even going to know what to do with them. And so this is kind of a big project and you have to keep up with it or your colony might die out a little bit and that would defeat the entire purpose of having a colony so you didn't have to buy more roaches. Uh, but yeah, so there are so many benefits to breeding your own dubia roaches and I really highly recommend it. I think that it will save you so much money in the long run and you will ask yourself why you didn't start sooner. All right, that is it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Again, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And turn on my post notifications so you can be notified when I post more content. There's a little peek at Kiwi. Don't mind the dirty glass. I'm going to clean it today. Uh, but we love you guys, and we hope you have an amazing day. We will see you next time.